Welcome. It is a, a joy to greet you this morning on a rainy Sunday, and we do need the rain, so it is very welcome this morning. Does anyone have any announcements that they would care to share? John. Hey. Uh, 21 years ago this morning, uh, Mary Martha and I were blessed with baby daughter. Happy birthday, Abby. It's nice to have you with us and officially legal in this country. So <laughs> enjoy your majority. Uh, we do have one family that we will be sharing food with this year, a, uh, a family of uh, four Hispanics. Hispanic people, a, a mother and three children. So we will be a gathering food for them um, once a month. Also for those at home, we will be having communion today. So um, if you want to go and get some communion elements to uh, partake with us, um, this would probably be a good time for that. Get some uh, bread and juice or water and you can take part at home. So seeing no more announcements, let us stand as you are able for the call to worship. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Selah. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you at a time of distress. The rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. Selah. And now let us join silently in hymn number 73, O Worship the King. Thank you. 
Thank you, Olive. Now let us join together in the prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, holy and merciful God, we confess that we have not always taken upon ourselves the yoke of obedience, nor been willing to seek and to do your perfect will. We have not loved you with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. Neither have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. You have called to us in the need of our sisters and brothers, and we have passed unheeding on our way. In the pride of our hearts and our unwillingness to repent, we have turned away from the cross of Christ and have grieved your Holy Spirit. Hear these words of assurance. Jesus came not to condemn, but to give us true life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. And now I invite you to turn to your neighbor and virtually pass the peace of Christ. Okay, now let us join in hymn number 358, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, verses 1 through 4. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 2 through 4. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. The second reading is from Matthew 6, verses 9 through 15. And pray in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This week we finish our look at the Lord's Prayer. And the first three portions of the prayer are about God, our Heavenly Father, who loves and cares for us. We prayed that God's name would be hallowed and loved by people here throughout creation. And we prayed that God's kingdom of love would come to full fruition here on earth is even as it has in heaven. The first part of the Lord's Prayer is an admission that we are dependent upon God and seek to glorify God in our lives and in the world. Finally, we pray for ourselves and our needs, trusting in God to provide for them as he does for the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. Our prayer recognizes that we need the essentials of life each day, but only enough, not a dangerous, a dangerously addicted excess of riches. In faith, we neither need to fret nor hoard, but try to be so fully present even in the in the small day-to-day -day things of life that we will be able to sense Jesus' presence even in the breaking of our daily bread with thankfulness for God's provision. But our request for daily bread is not limited only to requests to fill our physical needs. It's also a request for the coming of God's kingdom on earth and which we will join in Christ in his post-return banquet. This is foreshadowed in the communion that we will be sharing later this morning. We are reminded in Deuteronomy 8 that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Just as God provided for Israel during the 40 years in the desert, God wants to provide for us. But like Israel, we have to trust that God will do that. Now today, it would be difficult to live by bread alone. Bread and water would be considered more of a punishment than a sustenance to be thankful for. And today's bread has been bleached and processed so much using grain that is so genetically dissimilar to wheat of a hundred years ago that there is very little nutritional value left in it. So we might be better off thinking about what actually sustains us these days. We have access to a wide variety of foods these days that come from anywhere in the world. It doesn't need to be grown or produced locally. So we are blessed with access to God's bounty that our forefathers could not have possibly imagined. I remember my grandfather telling me that getting an orange was a special Christmas treat. 
And the growing seasons aren't as much of a consideration either. We can get meat, fruits, and vegetables year round. We also pray that we will be released from slavery to sin and death and to for the strength and willingness to forgive others as God forgives us. There is freedom in forgiveness for both the forgiven and the forgiver as the weight of anger, sin, and shame are lifted. And we long to share in that grace-filled state with both God and our neighbors as we model God's love with those we meet. By forgiving others, we free ourselves to experience God's forgiving love more fully ourselves, which makes it possible for us to love and forgive others more freely and joyfully as well. Now, it may be difficult for us to realize that forgiveness is one of our essential needs, but it is. Reverend Scott Hosey shares the Templeton Foundation's nationwide study on people's attitudes of forgiveness, which was co-sponsored by the University of Michigan and the National Institute of Mental Health. This survey found that 75% of Americans are very confident that they have been given, forgiven by God for their past offenses. The lead researcher, Dr. Lauren Toussaint, expressed great surprise in such a high confidence, especially since many of these same people were not regular churchgoers. Still, three quarters of the people surveyed have few doubts about God's inclination to let bygones be bygones. The picture was less bright, however, when it came to interpersonal relations. Only about half the people surveyed claimed that they were certain that they had forgiven others. And I have to wonder how they defined forgiveness. Most people admitted, whereas God may be a galaxy class forgiver, ordinary folks often struggle. It's difficult to forgive people with whom we are angry. And it may be most difficult to forgive ourselves sometimes. But where forgiveness does take place, the study found a link between forgiveness and better health. The more, person, the more prone a person is to grant forgiveness, the less likely he or she will suffer from stress-related illnesses. So forgiveness is directly linked to the state of our soul and our mental health. Thus, it is something that we ask God for, just as we ask for bread to feed our bodies. These days, many of us are feeling the lack of companionship as we are socially separated from one another. So it's important to reach out to friends and loved ones by phone or email, if nothing else. And it's also important to reach out to God in prayer. God's Holy Spirit is always with us, but so often we are not aware of it. If we can be aware of God's presence, it helps to give us peace and contentment. Without being aware of God's presence, that we can feel isolated and alone. But when we feel God's presence, I believe we have a greater sense of purpose than we can achieve on our own, especially during trying times. We humans are social creatures, so the ongoing pandemic can really test our resilience. 
opioid abuse has gone up 50% this year. And much of that is credited to the pandemic, as well as the social and political unrest that we are experiencing these days. If we can let go of our fears and concerns and leave them in God's hands, we will be much better off, both spiritually and mentally. So much of our world seems out of control these days. That we are better off trusting in God's ability to turn even the darkest and the scariest events to the good. But that can be hard to do, as we like to feel that we are, or perhaps we should be, in control of our own lives and well-being. But this is probably the exact wrong time to be rugged individualists. It's time to take advantage of God and community as much as possible. It's the perfect time to work on our prayer lives as other avenues of socialization may be more difficult to achieve. Now, Jesus knew what it was like to be alone and unappreciated in a world that seems out of control. As Jesus said it in Matthew, Boxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. While he was often with the Twelve, he also made it a point to go out for some alone time with his Heavenly Father. It seems to be what sustained him through most of his ministry, especially in the end times. Jesus knew what was ahead for him and his disciples, and perhaps that's why he told them to pray to be, be delivered from the time of trial, or as we pray, into temptation. For during times of trial, we are often weak and prone to falling into temptation. Now, it's natural for people want to want life to be easy and to look for the easy way out. And we are certainly in trying times now, which has led to increased alcohol and substance abuse, to try to ease the anxiety that people are experiencing. But in reality, that only takes us farther and farther away from the control that we want in our lives. Again, if we can put some of the uncertainties of life into God's hands, we are much better off. Trusting in a loving and caring God can help to take some of the pressure off of us. There is no situation that God cannot redeem if we allow it to happen. Finally, trying times are often brought about or at least contributed to by selfish and evil people. It's right to ask God to be delivered from such people as they are the kind of people that bring down those around them. They think of and strive only for themselves. Life is hard enough without having to deal with the problems of selfishness and evil as well. Selfishness is all about the rights and wants of the individual. While Christianity is more about living in community and caring for others. If we can live out our Christian faith of loving God and loving neighbor before self, we will be outwardly focused and better off as we primarily focus on the needs of others rather than our own needs. After all, Jesus came to serve and not to be served. 
Let us seek then to live godly lives, striving to live out God's commandments and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And let us use the Lord's Prayer often as an anchor in our lives to help us stay centered on God and to remain in touch with the Holy Spirit as we seek to navigate these uncharted waters of the coronavirus and all the trials and uncertainties that are associated with it, as well as the uncertainties of life in general. God loves us. God forgives us and guides us ever anew. That is the good news. Let us share the good news with a dark and hurting world. We do not have to go it alone. And it does not all rest upon us to put things right. God is with us on this. God will redeem this. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let us join together in the contemporary affirmation. Throughout nature, we see the imagination of the creating God. In Jesus the Christ, we learn how to be in relationship with the Holy. With the Holy Spirit, we are empowered to embody divine love and mercy. In community, we experience belonging and receive the encouragement to live as faithful disciples of Jesus and to struggle for justice and peace for all creatures. Together, we have an insistent voice proclaiming there can be a kingdom of heaven. And now we come into our time of prayer together for those at home, please let me know how we can pray for you. Email your prayer requests to pastor at winfieldumc.org. Does anyone have joys or concerns that they would raise this morning? Okay, let us pray for Tanya, who um, we hope will be coming home soon from the nursing home. Others? Hello. I'm sorry, what happened to Deb's husband? Okay, so let us keep Deb Hafner's endeavor. Concerns, we're concerned about the increasing coronavirus contagion, uh, especially around people returning to school and college. And also this weekend with more public gatherings around the country over the Labor Day holiday. Let us also remember those affected by the ongoing California wildfires and the hurricane cleanup that is ongoing. 
And also I heard this morning of a tsunami that is headed towards Japan. So let us keep them in our prayers as well. As long with the continuing unrest and violence that is going on in our country. Hello. And our grandson Arthur is having his first birthday in Denver on Saturday. Thank you. Happy birthday to you and to Arthur. Hope that, that they will be joyful. Let us take these joys and concerns and those that yet remain upon our hearts to the one whose grace and strength is sufficient. Lord, you know the many uncertainties that we face in our lives and especially during this time of pandemic. People who are experiencing illness and death of loved ones, those who have lost work or had their hours reduced because of the pandemic. Lord, there is so much uncertainty these days and so much to be fearful of. We pray that you will help us feel your spirit abiding with us each and every day and allow us to place some of our fears and our concerns in your hands so that we do not carry them all ourselves. We pray also that you will help us to forgive each other and ourselves as our country seemingly grows more and more divided every day. Let us seek to heal and to regain the community that we once had and reach out to help our neighbors as we would want others to help us in similar situations. Lord, we give you thanks for all that you have provided for us, for the food that we have access to, the, the shelter, the clothing, and a technology that can help to bring us together when we cannot be physically close to each other. Lord, guide us anew to be your people in the world each and every day. And be with those who are traveling this weekend that they will return home safely. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we come into the time of the offering. For those that are here, there is a basket in the back which you can deposit your offerings in when leaving. And for those that are remaining at home and worshiping with us online, I ask that you would consent, continue to send your tithes and offerings to church at P.O. Box 359, Winfield, Illinois, 60190. Or you may also text funds to 844-928-1220. Enter the amount and check Winfield. Thank you for your continuing support for the mission and ministries of Winfield Community United Church. This month and next month, we are collecting for the blue band of our rainbow covenant. 
Through the help of their program partners and supporters, Bridge Communities provides free transitional housings to 131 homeless DuPage County families each year. During the two years each family spends in this program, they are able to save money, learn budgeting skills, and obtain better employment so that they can live self-sufficiently once they graduate. Now let us dedicate our gifts. Lord, as you have shown your light among us in Christ Jesus, we pause in thanks and praise to offer our gifts. May they be used to magnify your light in the dark places of this world so that your kingdom may become more evident for all to see as it is shared by your people. Amen. We will now can receive communion, share in communion for the first time in many months. Those of you at home, um, if you don't have your elements, please go get them now. And we will join in singing the first verse of hymn number 620, One Bread, One Body. Now let us join together silently in hymn 102. Now thank we all our God.
Now, as we go forth into the world this week, may we go with the sure knowledge that the Holy Spirit goes with us to help provide for our needs and to forgive us and to help us to forgive. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.